Okay, we're going to look at wood turning now uh, between on a spindle. Uh, that is normally that you're going across the grain there. So the grain will be running that way, which makes a difference on the tools that you actually use. You can see that I've already marked up the centres and used a brad to make a hole so that they will fix between the, the fixed and the, the revolving centres that we've got here. Um, we'll just set this up now and come back in a minute when we're ready to start. Okay then, we've got the tail stock in position, locked in position. Those are set on the centres, but that's still turning. So we need to engage that and do him up so that he's nice and, and steady on there. Okay, we'll tighten that up so that there's no vibration. It's very important that you get the actual tool resting as close to the, the actual wood as you can because obviously if you're turning with wood if you've got a large gap and it catches there's a lot of leverage there for the the tool to be shot up so the closer you can get it into the wood safely the less chance you've got of anything catching and the tool being taken out your hand okay with the pupils i suggest that you use a, a full face mask um, as you can see it's it's similar to the one that we use in the heat treatment, but with these ones, the, the BS number is slightly different. This is a D1663D um, and it's shatterproof. Uh, or you can use spectacles that you've got there. With regards to clothing, there should be no loose clothing, baggy clothing or anything like that. Long hair should be tied back. So we'll get a jumper on this to make sure that we've got no pieces hanging down. It's very important that you get the speeds correct. Obviously, if you've got a large piece of wood, um, the actual mass that's turning is greater, so you need a slower speed. Uh, we're going to rough out now with a roughing gauge, and as you can see, the profile is that you've got the, the bevel cutting area there. So the idea is you bring it onto the tool rest, then you bring it in, and where it catches, you then start cutting. Okay, then we're down a bit longer now, so we'll, we'll turn that off. And as you can see from there, that gap is a bit large now. So we'll actually move in. And lock him in position there. And just make sure that the spindle is clear all the way through. Okay, now we're going to use the, the spindle gouge. Now we've got that nice and round. We can do some shaping with this. Um, if you're going to do through the grain there on a, on a bowl gouge, that would be a lot pointier. And it's sometimes known as the, the fingernail gouge. But um, we'll see what sort of thing we can get out of here now. So again, you bring the tool, lift it up till it's cut in. And then with this one, if you turn it on its edge, you get a nice little curve through there.
Uh, when you put the sanding sealer on, it, it, it brings the fibres of the grain back out. So this is just a very light buff now to, to sit those back down. And all we do now, you can see it just buffing up there where it's, it's, it's going in. Just need to finish the bottom off there um, and we can get a chuck on there and just clean the top off there as well. But there you can see it's a nice finish on there. Very simple, it's only gone to 400 grit.